Friday night guys with Anna. Welcome to a last second, last spare moment of Friday night guys. This was not planned. We didn't expect to do this, but everybody seems to be full of energy after doing um, Tracy's show game night. Do not forget to go see that. Drop her a line. But apparently we ain't sleepy. We ain't tired. So we decided to do a Friday night, guys. And lo and behold, look who's with us tonight is the lovely Ada Hart, Borrelia, etc. And of course, I got my brother Theus Robinson on here. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this subject. I'm just going to jump into it because I kind of lied earlier today by saying there wasn't enough information. I still think there's more, so we can only just speak on what we know. But earlier today, uh, Paul Pelosi was attacked in his home by someone with a hammer, yelling and screaming, where's Nancy, where's Nancy? So, yeah. Well, there has been more information that came out. I just want to hit, go ahead and discuss it. I was going to wait till Sunday, but it's like, I have this feeling that it's going to be one of those stories that's just going to like fade. It goes out. Yeah, it's going to fade into the ether by Sunday. Like, yeah, it happened, and let's move on. Mm. So let's go ahead and just get it out now, just get it out of the way. 
That's right. Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked around 2.30 this morning inside their home. SFPD believe this man was actually looking for Nancy Pelosi inside their home as he kept shouting, where is Nancy? The house in question is the brick one to my right. An intruder broke into the home of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi through the back door of her San Francisco home. The Speaker's husband, 82-year-old Paul Pelosi, was home and alerted police to the break-in just before 2.30 this morning. When officers arrived, within three minutes of that call, they walked in on the suspect and Mr. Pelosi. When the officers arrived on scene... They encountered an adult male. The speaker was in Washington, D.C. Police say the suspect, 42-year-old David Apepe, confronted the speaker's husband, Paul Pelosi, shouting, where is Nancy, before striking him with a hammer. And violently assaulted him with it. Police tackled the suspect, taking him into custody. Both Mr. Pelosi and the Pepe were taken to the hospital. Mr. Pelosi, who was struck in the head, had surgery this morning, and he's expected to recover from the attack. Police booked the Pepe on attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, burglary, and several other additional felonies. The motive for this attack is still unclear. However, in recent weeks, the suspect has been posting extremist views online, fixated on government censorship and making anti-Semitic comments. Federal authorities have warned congressional leaders of the potential for extremist attacks ahead of the midterm election in two weeks. The FBI and the U.S. Capitol Police are both investigating this attack. We are hearing that Speaker Pelosi is en route to San Francisco right now to be with her husband. A wise person was told me earlier today, actually. So y'all still think they're the same party? Y'all, y'all still think that? Same side of the coin. Oh, Same that. bird, different Same. wing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I only have ever said that they are bankrolled by the same people. But no, they're not the same party. Their, their ideology and their methods of pushing their ideology, if y'all can't see how different it is, y'all not pay, y'all not only are you not paying attention, you refuse to pay attention. You're just refusing to do it. Because this doesn't make any sense that y'all can look at some stuff like this and think, oh, but they're the same party. But no. Their method of making money, corruption, I'll give it to you. Sure. Give you that much. But their ideology... And how much they are willing to go to get their ideology out, forced? No. No. Nowhere near the same. Nowhere near the same thing. See, there's a big difference between um, Marjorie Taylor Greene running on stage yelling how the Democrats are taking babies and 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 use it. it. It's totally different from QAnon screaming at the top of their lungs about stealing babies and using blood for facial creams and whatever it is that they're saying right now. That's different because all that is is talk. That's all that is. That's words. Spoken language. These people on the other side, oh, no, 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 no. They're action. And on a smaller scale, that I, I ain't even taking away from this. But on a, even on a smaller scale, how many attacks have we heard going on in, um, that goes on at school boards? But Marlon, what about all the riots during the summer? Yeah, that was covered up by the um, January 6th um, tour guide that went on. But Marlon, mm -hmm. there were riots all over Portland and where Seattle. There was riots, Marlon. 
They, it's one fire. They damage things. Hmm. There's a over a hundred capital police that's never gonna see that family again. Yeah, they will. They got a hundred. So we gotta make sure we're being fair. It's a hundred and twenty police officers that were seriously or severely injured. Oh, but sorry. there's a total of like three right. that will never see, see their family, family again. Right. One Always had a heart three. attack and two committed suicide. But I think that's the whole count. There might be more than that. Um but Thea's, the woman that got shot. She was a tourist. Because who does it and... with bear spray and riot gear and metal posts and stun guns and zip ties and an, and the noose? Don't forget the noose. That's just vacation, mm-hmm. and it had nothing, nothing to do with Trump at all. N- nothing. Sure, they took down the American flag and raised the Trump flag. I get how you would think that. You might think that's political. But it was on their own accord. By the way, if any of you morons come in here and go, oh my goodness, see, this is what they just why you cut this thing up, you're the problem. I don't care if they're the problem as long as they're on the winning side. You know, it's it's like cut the crap with people. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I don't know. Parker. Hey, Parker, hey, welcome Parker. back. Thank you. Hey, hey Tracy. Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Um, we don't know enough about this person. Hello, Mickey. That hey Mickey. hey, Mickey, that attacked this elderly man. Mm, that almost comes out as a nasty word, but yeah, sure. Huh? Finger. Oh. Right in there. Got it. Mm. So it's like, well, here's what I, I anticipate we're gonna hear. We're gonna hear that this person is mentally ill, and yep. then the Republicans are going to say that yeah. this is a reflection of mental illness, not a reflection of political discourse, stoking violence or um, terrorism. Because really, if this was motivated, which I suspect it is, if they're saying he was calling for his wife, um, then this is politically motivated, which makes it a terrorist act. But the right is going to shrug it off and say, you can't hold us accountable for every individual action that every individual takes. This person's already mentally unstable, Oh, and you notice he didn't use a gun. So, hey, lefties, what do you say about that? Since you think guns are so bad, are we going to rule out hammers now? And oh, they, like, oh, I'm sorry, Theus, to cut you off. They already did that. You don't remember the hammers kill more people in the United States than guns? Which isn't even true. But Not even gonna, close. Not even close. They're going to go there. Um I'm sure that their consultants are already working with them to make sure that they're polished in their responses. But you're going to be like, well, I guess so much for if we outlaw hammers, maybe we'll stop this too. And the Democrats are going to be stuck in a corner because they don't want to blame mental illness either. And any any efforts to address helping people with their mental health, right, has been blocked. And um, we're going to find ourselves right back where we were. And at the end of the day, an 82-year-old man. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Pelosi's. I think they're incredibly corrupt. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Incredibly corrupt, both of them. He is a a stock trader, stock broker, whatever you call him, venture capitalist who has made money off of insider trading by way of his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she's feeding him. Huh? 
I said, did you see the home that they have in San Francisco? When, in was... San Francisco, right? Because mm -hmm. here in Georgia, that's not that impressive. But to have that in gotcha. San Francisco. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's just. What's wrong with Washington, Pelosi? What's wrong with Washington? So it's going to be a big it's smoke beautiful. screen. And it's going to, you know, because, I mean, we've had now from people who are on the right. They've now shot Geffy Gil, Gap, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Arizona. Shot her in the face. Um, Gabrielle Giffords. Thank you. Shot the other guy at the baseball field. Had, yeah, there was a, a congressman who got shot at playing Congress baseball. Um, wow. This is some years back. I don't remember that one. We had the guy who was rolling around in the freaky white van with all the political paraphernalia around it and wanting to kill Hillary. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many mass shooters who put out their little weird manifestos. Yeah, the guy who went on the killing spree here in Atlanta murdered a bunch of people at massage parlors because, you know, he was sexually frustrated or whatever. Um Oh, yeah, all these right? things coming from the right. They all come from the right. But then they say, because the, the media doesn't care, mm -hmm. they just want clicks and they just want attention and they want ad revenue. They will always say both sides, even though the two sides are not remotely equal. Like you can't find the terrorist attacks on the left. You just simply can't. And when you do have the riots that they love to bring up, the only reason they existed is because someone was murdered. Mm -hmm. Like if you stop the killing, you didn't get a riot. This isn't hard. <laughs> and, and, and the funny fact about it, since y'all want to keep bringing up the protest, which turned into a riot. There was a killing during the protest. Funny how you never actually tell everybody who was the one who the killer was. You talking about the 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 boy with the the whatever? No, no, that no. They no, made the, into the, a hero. The deputy, not, not the deputy that got killed. Oh, there was a deputy that got killed. The fact, come to find out, it was the Boogaloo boys that did it. Right. Uh, and so, so y'all will go as far as to say there's a riot. You will find that one target that was on fire, and you will play it five, six, seven, eight times to try to fool well fool from whatever it. angle they can play it. Yeah, play it five, six times to show that it happens every night. Um. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, I but, mean, there's uh, so many examples of attacks and terrible things from the conservative side of the political spectrum. And you're not hearing about militias on the left. You're not. The plot to kidnap oh. a sitting governor that didn't come from the left. The arson mm -hmm. in Minnesota, that was the Boogaloo Boys. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just we know we're going to get the, the both sides isms from the media. And we know we're going to get the talking heads who are going to twist themselves in the knots to say that the discourse is just out of hand on both sides. Um, what about and, it? And you're going to get the you know, this is Biden's America and um, and something somehow guaranteed is going to go back to the gun thing. It's going to be, it's not even going to be another gun was used. It's going to be, see, no gun was used. And it's like so predictable. And it, and it kills me because did we not have yet another school shooting? Yeah, we did. In St. Louis, 
did you notice that got very little news? Was there only two people who got shot? Two people that died. Two. Several people uh, got hurt. Several people got injured. Really? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm guilty. Uh, I didn't pay attention to it either. It's become so common. I'll, I'll show us. I'll show the the video Sunday. I'm not going to try to look for it today. But the guy literally went down the list of um, the people who were either killed or injured. I mean, I was actually shocked that he did it, but he did it. But um, I'll, I'll bring that up Sunday. But I digress. There is there is no fundamental way of you saying, what about is um, look this way. What about? But there is no fundamental way that you could actually say that without purposely trying to take make people take their eye off of the ball. Like this is what's going on right here, right now. So let's go at it, man. What is the ball? The ball is you have a side of government who are purposely going out of their way to force their agenda on the American people, whether right or wrong. And they are willing and capable, apparently, to use force to get this done. On the other end, not even on the other end. I'm still talking about that side. On the on the way of doing that to gaslight you into thinking, a no, it's the other side that's doing it. B, there's a reason why we're doing it is to save America. Or C, uh, no, that didn't happen. That's all. But Marlin. Inflation. <laughs> See, you're worried about our yeah. very system of governance and about our ability to meet our obligations as a nation, both militarily and financially, and about keeping our citizens safe and free. But <laughs> inflation, Marlon. <laughs> It costs more for me to go and get gas than it did two years ago during a COVID pandemic where no one was driving and so forth, and that meant demand was low. But my gas prices are higher, Marlon. And when I want to go buy bread, it's costing me $2.50. It used to be a dollar and a quarter. That's a hundred percent increase, Marlon. I but you want answer. me to worry about I terrorism? For you, I have an answer. I have the solution. This, hmm. I have the solution. Ooh. I have the solution to right make there. your paycheck bigger. Listening, bigger. Go for it. Because they are going to cut Medicaid and Medicare, so you will have more. Coming to your check. Social Security, no, oh. we ain't got to worry about that no more. We're going to take care of that. So we ain't got to take no more Social Security out of your paycheck. We ain't got to take Medicaid out of your paycheck. You're going to get rid money. of Medicare and FICA pocket. so I get more of my check. So yep. each of my paychecks will be $75 higher. Yep. I'm like that. Wow. But what happens? When you know, because see, I'm at my working age yeah, and, I'm, and, yeah, and I'm raising yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, inflation. But, uh, no, guys. hear me. I'm, I'm at uh, my working age and I'm trying to raise my family. Uh, let's and, go, Brandon. But what um, happens? No, but if you cut, Medi um, no, because if you cut Medicare, then the, um, my, is my mother, this as she gets American. older, has to come live with um, me because uh -huh. there's no, there's no um, help for her. Biden's America. But what about the border? Yeah, got to watch out for those um, legal people who filed for asylum and were granted a hearing. Um, they're taking over the country. So let's go. Uh, Mickey. Look, Mickey. There she go with facts again. And I understand and logic. that inflation 
is the entire world is hit with inflation. Is it really? It really or, is. Or, or, mm -hmm. or, or could we just sit and just discover when did the entire world was hit with inflation? Marlon, I got the answer. Biden was elected into office. Inflation See, hit the world. What happened was Biden <laughs> put all that inflation in the air. And the rest <laughs> of the world had that bad inflation. In the, and yeah. we had the good inflation. And then our good inflation <laughs> went over there. And their bad inflation came over here. And oh, I got a badge like the oxygen, uh. yeah. But vote okay, for me I'm because I'm, stop I'm, I'm this barely game. literate, but I'm, I'm on the Republican side, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop playing this game because I refuse to go to sleep stupid. So that's the point. The point Good. is, these are their arguments, these are their same arguments. How do we know it's their same arguments? Nothing has changed because it works. This is the same argument they've always used. That's the point. They have, and I know I keep using this analogy for the longest time, but it is the same analogy. They have laminated cards for every situation. Now, I'm going to change one little thing on my side, the is not yours. I'm going to change one little thing that you said. They're going to come out because they love to come out with hopes and prayers when, you know, Little kids get gunned down in school. So I guarantee you they're gonna come out with I hope Nancy Pelosi's husband is okay. You know, we're praying for the prayers Pelosi are with family. him and the family. Yeah, our prayers mm -hmm. are with them and blah blah blah. But because I already know Margie Taylor Green. Now you got to understand why the American people say he was just so frustrated with Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi. God, I didn't know how irritating her voice was. Until you oh, her voice is incredibly irritating. Good gracious, that's awful. That, you know. But she's already got that set up. She's already got the Nancy Pelosi without saying it, without saying it, but let's go ahead and just cut to the chase, just like what Thea said. Let's just go ahead and cut through the chase. She deserved it. But that's all yeah. no matter what her speech is, no matter what the beginning of it, the middle of it is, the end result is without saying it. Yeah, but she deserved it. And, and that's what's gonna happen. And or they'll do what they always do and they'll disown it. Like that's the, the thing about, and I blame the entire conservative movement. When I don't care where you sit on the spectrum, um, they have this tendency where they think of humanity as like machines. Like coming mommy. through the American system. And if they are male, cisgendered, married men, I said male earlier, but anyway, mm -hmm. then Mailman. that's the way the system is supposed to design you. And then an alternate machine creation would be the traditional woman. Anything outside of that, there's a flaw in the machine. Somebody's playing with the machine. And then whenever one of their perfect creations goes off and does something horrendous that they can't find a way to make an excuse for, they treat them like a reject. Like, oop, no, nope, that's not us. That one just had you know, bad programming, right? Lone wolf, lone wolf, lone wolf, right? Not, this is a person who's been consuming our media and consuming our hate and receiving the downloads constantly to be afraid and angry. And then you just have to wait for someone who is afraid, angry, desperate, and hopeless. And they will go and act on these things because a lot of times they're looking to attach themselves to something bigger than themselves. And they're willing to die for it. They're willing to commit violence for it because they need a purpose. And these people know that these people are out there. And they just keep riling them up until a few of them fall off the truck and go and do these things. And then they disown them. You got to understand that the, the, 
the whole mentality slash game of talker of Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, and their rhetoric. They want you to be the fool. They not gonna do it. You can forget it. Go snatch. So go the next time you see somebody walking down the street with a mask on, go snatch it off their face, and then they're not gonna do it. Tucker's already approved that. I got a mm-hmm. daughter. I got a, my daughter here. And so Tucker already approved. He ain't that. He he ain't, he ain't from that guy. life. Mm-hmm. He not from that. But he know if you talk that stuff over and over and over and over and over again. I, I, let me let me just use this. You remember the seventies, the eighties, and seventies, eighties rock and roll music, um, heavy metal music, satanic oh, music. Play the music backwards, and there's a the devil talking to you. Yeah, <laughs> and then gangster rap came out. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, what? don't put us in that. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. It's, this is my analogy. The analogy was. Their whole mentality is if you listen to that stuff long enough, you'll start emulating it. So that's why we want you to stop listening to this stuff. If you listen to it long enough, you start emulating it. Yeah, to an point, you y'all literally actually played the music backwards. Oh, I don't even know, won't even imagine how many albums y'all tore up doing that. But knock yourself out. The point of the matter is. You listen to and you listen to it and you listen to it and you listen to it. These are these are the fears of the parents. If you my kids listen to it and listen to it, soon enough they'll start doing it and start doing it and start doing it. What's the difference now with news media? If you're listening to it and listening to it and listening to it and listening to it day in, day out, because remember, media is 24 7. Well, here's All the, day low. And so you listen thing, to that and you want to defend this free nation where technically they're trying to take your freedom away, but let's go with that flow. The free nation of America is in danger and you, not me, because I'm a millionaire and I've been a millionaire all my life. I'm just telling you because you have nothing to lose other than your real freedom. You need to go do something about it. It's the same thing. If you hear this stuff over and over and over and over again, and COVID was a pure catalyst for it because you're talking about a group of people who, and I'll be honest with you, it may not have been all there before the COVID but see, we gotta stop. happened, but did you shut them off from the world? But I'm just saying, we got to... We have to, just because of how it's being weaponized, we got to stop using mental health in any of these discussions. Because until the person has been diagnosed by a professional through a process, we can't just give them a mental health diagnosis. It's not fair to all the people who are literally dealing with real mental health issues. Now, the people may be, you know, but until they've actually been diagnosed by a clinician or a professional, I refuse to give it to them. I just refuse. It's kind of like if a cop says that the guy had a gun, I don't believe you, Mr. Officer. I don't believe nothing you say. You got to prove it the same way that you would make another person prove it. And we keep giving out this 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 pass, you know, which cre- which creates an easy way to avoid the issues. Like, why are people desperate? Why are people frustrated? Why are people feeling hopeless? What are things we can do to reduce those things? It's not that it will eliminate the outcomes, but we can at least reduce the outcomes. We say that we say mental health is an issue, but we don't, we're not able to get anything passed to put money Thank into the system. In the eighties, we closed down all the asylums, which were pretty, which is a good reason because they were abusing these people because they didn't mm-hmm. have the right oversight. Mm-hmm. 
right? The problem wasn't the asylum. The problem was the oversight. The problem was that you were treating them as though they were not people, yeah. right? So fix what's actually wrong. But instead, we, 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 we basically kind of goes back to the machine analogy. We basically decide who is programmed properly and who is not. And then if you're not, we, we just kind of whatever happens to you, happens to you. Runaways, whatever happens, happens. Um, migrants who's, who come into the system and they get sucked into the sex trade. Whatever happens, happens. Um, how many children are disappearing constantly all around the country? Whatever happens, happens. Like it's, let's just focus on that nice, good part. Let's just focus on the Cleaver story. And we'll deal with the Dahmer story when it happens, when we catch it. We can do so much better. We really can. We but can. you got to decide to do it. it. It's not even the fact that it, everybody wants to throw the whole mental health thing out there. It's a, it is a serious issue. But it's a convenient what I have. What I, I have a, yeah, what I have a problem when people throw that out is but you don't do anything about it. It's like gun control. You can sit there and say whatever you want to, but again, I'll go back to it again. The guy that shot up the school in Texas, he had mental health. He had a mental health issue. He had a mental health issue. Hmm. So do you think any type of way that $300 million that you just happened to cut out of the budget that was supposed to go to mental health may have actually help that situation but see that's the problem right there in my opinion in my opinion um going after mental health to reduce crime is a huge huge issue because one you're stigmatizing those with mental health that mental mental health yeah, issues exactly yeah. they are not even the leading cause of crime okay so you're stigmatizing them, making them others, which pushes them further into the shadows. That's the first thing. Then you're not even putting the supports in place that if they start to have issues, it won't be the person having issues in most cases that seeks the help. It'll be their family and friends who help get them to the help. Because if you're dealing with it, unless you catch it early, you'll be so far in it, you don't even recognize that you're in it. Right. So people have to have systems in place that come to them in love. Right. Now, I'm not the one who I, I'm not really on that 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 tip where they talk about how, you know, uh, drug dependency is a mental illness. I, I'm not there with you guys yet, but I do believe that there, everybody's a human being. And I do believe that. um we should try to help. And, and I and I do believe that everybody is not going to want help and you mm -hmm. can't force them to get help. And if they refuse to get help and they do something that is against the social norms, then they need to be punished for whatever they did. Right. But once you do that, they never lose their humanity. And I think that's a, 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 a straw that that ties everything together for me. Wherever you are in your life, you are a person. So if you are a drug addict and you are on the streets, because that's not the same thing. So offer them help, make help available. It should be robustly funded by the, by the country. Invest in your people, right? You invest in healthcare. You invest in mental health care. You invest in education. You invest in civil, civil and national defense. You invest, right? And this is a weird tangent. I'm gonna do this on one of my shows here shortly. But police officers, I think most of y'all know how I feel about the police. Um, but if you want to improve part of that situation, these police officers should not be working 60, 70 hours a week. These police officers 
um, should not be making like 30s, like in the 30s. <laughs> and it, it just like you should improve their training, improve the standards to be a police officer, improve their opportunities to grow and have other pathways. Right. So if you come in as a police officer, you might go and become a social worker within the law enforcement community, or you might go on any number of pathways because the police is nothing but a domestic military. So our military, you can do all types of things in the military. You don't have to just run around pointing a gun shooting. That same thing can and should exist on the police side. And then for our police officers who are constantly doing this, who are constantly in the field, this is me. I think that every beat cop and detective should be required to take two weeks off paid vacation every year. And I think that they should also have a very robust vacation plan so that only they do the two weeks off. Because here's the thing about two weeks. It's kind of like I get this from banking, y'all. In banking, we had to take two weeks off. And the reason we had to do that is because if we were doing something shady, removing us from the system in two weeks time with nobody managing it, stuff starts showing up. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is how you catch some of the corruption that happens in there. Make sure their retirement is good. All these things we should be doing better for our police officers at the same time we raise the bar and do all these different things. And this is the same thing that translates across the board. I don't care where you're touching it. You talk about your politicians. I say no more than 12 years. I don't give a damn what your job is. 12 years. That's what you got. Right. What's that? Six terms as a house. Uh, two as a senator. If You couldn't get it done in 12 years. <laughs> time to, time to uh, hang it up. You're not good at this. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. I was all over the place. Oh, and then I'm gonna still add into that. Like I've always said, y'all should not be y'all should not be trading stock. I'm sorry, or owning businesses or any of that thing. I'm sorry, you shouldn't. Even if you ain't inside of trading everything else, let's just be realistic. How hard could it possibly be for you to do so? So, yeah. It's well, see, if you if you do the term limits and you make insider trading illegal for them, right? Because right now they just got like a two hundred dollar fine. That's nothing. <laughs> or is it, no, two thousand. I think it's a two thousand dollar fine. That's nothing. We're paying them a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. What do they care about two thousand? No, we're right? paying a million dollars a year. But I get what you're saying. Go ahead. No, I mean, there's their annual salary is like a buck twenty, right? So. If you make okay. it illegal to receive any uh, gifts or consideration outside of your salary in excess of, say, $500, make that a felony. You will now cut out a lot of people who are going into politics because they'd be like, I can't make enough money that way. Yeah. Also, make them do a five-year non-compete after they finish office so you can't go immediately from being a congressman to being a lobbyist make them have to cool off we do it in banking we do it in insurance we do it in all kinds of industries right do that make sure they can't stay in office more than 12 years like i said now if you can if you that magical a politician that you can do 12 as a house of the rep the house of representatives and then do a 12 as a senator, congratulations, you just did 24 years. You were amazing. But most people won't be able to do that. You, you start make, closing some of the doors so that what will happen is your best and your brightest, wherever they may come from the different walks of earth, they come in, they can't do anything illegal because they don't have enough time to build the relationships, right? And they can't get too much out of it because it's all a felony. So they do their time and they go back to private bit, private industry. Right now, what we have in the situation is you could be making $150,000 a year in your private industry. Give that up. Oh, I'm better. $250,000 a year in your private business. And then you go to Congress and make $120,000? Come on. You know they up to something. You know they up to something. 
There is and no. And they come out a millionaire. <laughs> you took my joy. <laughs> you took my joy. But I was literally was going to say, you could not explain to me in a million years. 150, 250, 300 a year. You gave that up to go to Congress. You a millionaire <laughs> within three years of all years. your debt gone. All, all of it. You a millionaire <laughs> by three years. You're done. You, you, you. Hey, honey, it was nice for us to be in this three bedroom home, but we need to expand. Let's go get this 12 bedroom home. And then while you're there, you get your nephew a job, you get your cousin a job, you know, you get your, your daughter is now going to go work for one of the companies that was lobbying for you. See, all the money that moves is not cash. See what I'm saying? So that's why they have to crack down on anything you get of value has to be reported and you can't have anything more than pick a number. You know, like and when I where I came from, it was ten dollars. <laughs> you couldn't get nothing worth more than ten dollars. <laughs> so do something like that. But in order to do those things, guess who has the right the law to make that happen? So they're not going to write laws to curb their own abuses. It, it would completely disrupt uh, Washington. Nancy Pelosi couldn't be as rich as she is. She's And she's just a figurehead. There's so many of them, uh, all the rest of them, really. Why is Bernie Sanders still a senator? Yeah, I said Bernie Sanders. Why mm -hmm. is he still a senator after all these years? Right? Mm -hmm. So there's a reason these people get in there and they stay. There's a guy running for re-election right now who might win. He's 89 years old running for a re-election as a senator. So he, obviously his retirement plan is to die at work. Now, that's the voters' fault. Family taken care of. His family well taken care of. Yep. But that's that's the voters' fault. And this is when we circle back and it's got we got to look at us. We got to look at us here. Right? We fell asleep at the switch. And I'm talking Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, lefty, righty. This is where the Trumpists got the game right. They looking at it and say, everybody crooked. So they're like, everybody's crooked. So I might as well work with the crooked that works for me. That's what the Trump people are doing. They know <laughs> Trump is a criminal. They know Trump is a liar. That, that's why they don't care when you say that stuff. But he works for them. So... Leave them alone. That's how they view it. So really? everybody's crooked. But when it comes to a senator, a governor, those are the two positions that's popular vote. Like, you don't have to keep a corrupt senator. The only reason we keep them is because we are too lazy to go and know who's on the ballot. We have no clue who's on the ballot unless you wanted to 12 people whose name we know. 100 senators, and I bet nobody can name more than 12. <laughs> and, they, and they're the bad ones. I guarantee you, you would not be able to name them unless they was in the news over and over and over and over again. And by mm -hmm. the way, he's been, this is being nice. He really is. I can give you a name and I guarantee you because, and I'm not trying to pick on you, I'm trying to reinforce that this is things that you need to know. I can give you a name and I guarantee you, you couldn't tell them if they was in the House or the Senate. You just know them by name. I, I, I just guarantee it. I can sit there and go, Marjorie Taylor Green, Ted Cruz, which one is in the Senate? Well, I know the answer. I know the Georgia. answer. <laughs> so I'm in Georgia. But I'm with you. Answer. But but I'm you, with you but literally you could not tell are they in the house or the senate. Yeah. I say hey. Chuck Grassley, you don't know where the hell he is at. 
You don't know what state that is, but you do know you heard that name. Lou you know you heard the name. So that's how he says it in office. Chuck yeah. Schumer. What, what the hell he done did? Chuck what, 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 what you doing, bro? Chuck, what you doing? No, I even make it. He, Chuck Schumer. What state yeah. he from? Yeah. He's from New York. Nancy Pelosi. Hey, did y'all see the Saturday Night Live California. where they did the Chuck Schumer and the, and the um, Nancy Pelosi joint? It was hilarious. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I, I laughed. I probably shouldn't have. Who you from? Biggie, I, I know everybody here. <laughs> yeah. No, I got that point. Well, I'm just it's saying. The Chuck Grassley one. I'm still going. Hmm. See? But that's what I mean. Right. But you know that name, right? Tim, yeah, Tim, I did. Tim Scott. Yeah. That's your boy. Mm-hmm. Ain't nowhere near my boy. Ain't Ain't no boy. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. If I got if I got the own crazy ass Herschel, <laughs> you gotta own Timmy. Timmy Timmy's South Carolina. Hey, I ain't got nothing Timmy. to do with Timmy South Carolina. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Look, I got hey, North Carolina little... was in the news here recently now. I got little Y'all little got a crazy one too. Go close to me if in South Carolina. So no. <laughs> I'm good. I'm about to say North Carolina got some mess going on too right now. No, my yeah, my boy got fired though. <laughs> um Crenshaw. I'm, I'm I'm looking right now. Who is this uh Sherry Beasley? Sherry Beasley. Beasley versus Ted Bud. If hmm. that ain't the Ted Bud, if that ain't the Bud. country's name, Ted Bud. This this is about as close as you could possibly get to one just slight, slightly less corrupt than the other one. Those two people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Sherry Beasley. Now, Ted Bud is like straight up lying little sack of whatever because I saw one of his commercials where he came on and go and they're going to all your they're going to get rid of all your um, college debt as long as you make over $70,000 a year. Yeah, I mean, they don't even care how bold-faced the lie is because the media as a whole won't directly challenge them, right? You'll get someone like a Mehdi Hassan who will tear you from limb to limb with facts and details. Washington. But he's on MSNBC. So full half of the spectrum ain't going to pay attention to him anyway, no matter how accurate his statement is. Well, yeah, don't, you know what? That's don't, unfortunately don't, don't believe a word out of, that comes out. I mean, of that ain't mouth. what Tracy Tracy ain't. I mean, Tracy know all this stuff, but that's <laughs> that's the the view that we end up getting. And it's like, at first, <laughs> I get really frustrated because sometimes I'm I get sorry, super hold on for one second. We just found out that Tracy can't do a certain thing, and then she told us what she can't do. And oh my god, y'all have to watch the show, cause me and Thea's ain't never laughed that hard on a show in our whole life. That was just, yeah, that, it was, that was priceless. It I'm was sorry, it's, it it's go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but it's like, it's hard. Washington, Washington State, Nikki. It's hard. Sorry. Yeah, Washington State. To track the truth. Like, it's so hard that it's actually almost unfair to get upset with people anymore. Because social media is an echo. So it's just going to keep feeding you what whatever, right? You clicked on the wrong three types of posts in a day, and now your algorithm is screwed for the next week, right? Uh, most people do not pay attention to politics because it's so toxic. So they have zero idea what's going on. Um. That frustrates me because there's people who are very close to me who are just like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? But anyway, but they don't pay any attention to it. None. And then election day comes around and they're just like, well, who do I vote for? And they're legitimately don't know. They don't know how bad Herschel is. 
They don't know that you're literally putting a guy like Herschel Walker, who has not raised his children, violates almost every tenet of the Bible, cheats on, has cheated on multiple women, has pushed multiple women to have abortions and then paid for it and then said, I'm against it. Abusive. Right. Right. Abusive. You have all of these things on one guy and then the other guy allegedly ran over his ex-wife's foot and she never got hurt because it never happened. But he's a minister. He's got a squeaky clean record. And he can actually show you policy things that he's worked on to try to help people who don't even vote for him. But for some reason, these jokers are neck and neck because red versus blue. And I don't care where you go in the country, the polls always tighten in the end because red versus blue. And then you wonder, why is it like this? Why is it like this? And I'm like, you know, if you really slow down and look at it, man, just look at it. The Republican Party is like 95% white. Like 95%. The Democratic Party is a true rainbow of the population, right? It's different colors, different religions, different uh, economics, different all kind, everything you can look for that's the tapestry of America exists over on the on the Democratic Party. But we're not all Democrats because we actually care about Democrats. We're Democrats because we can't be Republicans. So that's why we're so dysfunctional. But the polls always tighten because you have, I'm just going to say roughly 70% of white America are Republicans. About 30% are Democrats or independents. And then you got the vast majority of every other group that still breaks out almost 50 50. When you run all the numbers together. So until we fix this system that has an electoral college that allows for you to tweak it here and there, we have the gerrymandering existing that allows you to tweak it here and there. You got the Supreme Court that has eroded every protection from gerrymandering to voting rights. This is what we have. So I think right now what we have to do is stop making people feel bad for not voting and get more engaged earlier on showing them why they themselves might want to vote. And we've done a terrible job of that. I've done a terrible job of that. Um, I, think, I think what we need to do on every show <clears throat> is to say, get out and vote. Here, here is my issue with people who don't vote. There was a record turnout for the, not a record, it was high. High turnout for Trump Biden. And it was a high turnout because everybody, history I've shown when there's a high turnout is mostly for the Democrats. And it's mostly for the Democrats because they're afraid of the BS that goes on with what the Republicans did, try to do, or would do if they won the election. Here's what the deal is. The Republicans know that. And they know this because what they're going to do, and I'm going to tell you off the bat, if they win the House and or the Senate or and the governorship and everything else, I promise you they're going to make it so it don't matter if you come out because you're tired of their bullshit. They're well, going to make it hard for you to vote. They're going to make it extremely hard for you to vote. Well, I've been doing one better, Marlon, because, and I agree with all of that. Um, the game is serious. It's very serious. And it's been serious. And I know people are tired of hearing this is the most important election of our lifetime. They're yeah. tired of hearing it. But that doesn't make it not true. If you don't fix something, it only gets worse with time. 
So it was the most important one last year. And because you didn't fix the problem, it's going to be the most important, most important one, one this, this year. year and next year and the year after that. So just because you're tired of hearing it, that doesn't make it untrue. It just means that you need to try harder. But instead, what people receive is one more scare tactic. So I'm going to put it like this. I don't know quite how to do it because I'm boring. So a lot of people don't hear what I say anyway. But tell me to vote the same way that I would challenge you to tell me to become a Christian or to become a Muslim. Tell me. Or a vegan. Or a vegan. <laughs> or anything that you feel. Oh, no, 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 Anna, we, we talked about that earlier today, remember? People yes. will go out of their way to try to convert you to their way of life. But, Christianity. But that's not where I'm headed, it. though. It's not where I'm headed. Good. What I'm saying is, whatever it is that you're saying I need to do, because people who are always beating the drum about vote, 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 See, here's the problem with that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to my real point in just a second. But the problem with always doing this vote, 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 vote shit is that you're not being honest with people. See, you're you're talking to people, not talking about you, Marlon or Anna, but you're talking to people like they're stupid. Like, you don't vote, so you need to go vote. Like, that's going to solve anything. And they know better because people know. They know about gerrymandering. They know about... Um, about the uh, the disenfranchisement. They know about the corruption in the Senate. They know about the corruption that surrounds the president. They know about the international affairs. These people are not stupid. They're turned off. That's what they are. So if only thing you tell them is vote, 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 like that's supposed to solve something, a cat like me would be like, that ain't the whole game. And, and either you don't know it, which is why I'm not going to listen to you, or you do know it. And you're not telling me. And that's why I'm not going to listen to you. So I would say, going back to my original point, tell me to vote like you would tell me to join your religion, except you can't use fear. It's going to be a little harder. It is harder. But that's how you truly convert someone. Tell me what I can get from this. Tell me how I can get a tangible return from this. Tell me how doing this thing you say go vote will actually help my child not be railroaded into the juvenile detention system. Tell me how this going to vote will make sure I can get an alderman that represents my views that can go and make sure that my neighborhood isn't slowly turned into commercial just because I don't have enough money to fight back against it. See what I'm saying? Give me something that I can work towards that actually does something for me. Telling me that, that Trump is evil does nothing for me. All of them evil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of them crooked. Tell me what you can give me. And see, Republicans are really good. They lie to you, but they're good at it. They'll tell you, I'm going to give you lower taxes. That hits you in your heart. That hits you in your feels. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you, like Marlon pointed out, reduce your taxes. But now your grandma can't go to assisted living. She got to come live with you. I I'm going to cut your taxes. But now there's not going to be enough money to cut the grass and the medians and trim the trees back so they're not knocking on your electrical wires and making sure you, your potholes are cleared up. I, I'm not going to tell you that part. I'm just going to tell you that you get to keep more money in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to reduce inflation, but I got no plan on how to reduce inflation because reality is my policies is what helped create the inflation in the first place. <laughs> we got to stop treating people like they're dumb. And I don't think that anybody, the parties, the parties are not ready to do that. The closest people I've heard come close to that has been the libertarians and they're full of shit. But they tell more truth than the other two parties. They'll just, you know, sell you down the river faster, but they're going to tell you the truth as they do it.
And I want to address this. After not delivering, they'll tell us we have to vote hard. What the living hell is living harder? I mean, vote harder. What the what is vote harder? It means you mean, we only gave them a split Senate this time. Right. They really would like a full Senate. If you gave me you, you, you gave, gave me, me 50. You gave me 50 plus one. So we got 51. But just imagine what we could do at 53. So <laughs> how do I, as a citizen, how do I, as a citizen, vote harder? You show up when you haven't been. See, so, that's where I was so saying. Like, it's to, a dis so you want me to vote. Not vote that's harder. You want me to vote. Because if I vote, I vote. My vote, one vote goes. There is no such thing as vote harder. Like you want me to punch the screen a little harder than I normally did for the Democrats. That doesn't even make sense <laughs> when people say that. Vote that's, harder. No, that's you want the me to disingenuous. Vote. Sure. That's the disingenuous messaging that I'm talking about. Yeah. So I'm saying that on one level, you absolutely have to give that message. Okay. Because everybody, and I know it is going to hurt some people's feelings, but those probably aren't the ones paying attention to this broadcast. Some people are not capable of processing strategy and planning. They're just not. That's not where they are. So for those people, get out and vote is the message. It's the milk, right? Everybody get out and vote. Get your mama, get your brother, get your cousin, get your aunt, get your uncle. Everybody got to vote. Go vote. Everybody vote. We're going to overwhelm the system. We're going to overwhelm mm, the system. Everybody go out and vote. Yeah. Right? That is a message everybody can take in and consume. Mm. The next level, though, we got to go to the bread. All right. If you want to make sure that you have some control over your school systems and things like that, we got to make sure that you're going to, you know, town halls. You got to go make sure you're going to the, the city council meetings, going to the school board meetings, um, get to know some of your politicians, volunteer, make phone calls. Right. That's like that's next level. But see, everybody wasn't going to do that. Right. And then you get to the meat. Now the meat start to look at, well, how do you make sure you're involved at the planning level of who even gets to go up for these positions? How do you make sure that you're actually being an organizer where you're actually pulling blocks of votes in, right? So there's all these levels happening. But at the baseline, you have to get out the message. You know, just please just go vote. <laughs> like, I know you're frustrated. I was so impressed to actually, I, funny that I picked up the phone because I rarely do. I just happened to be waiting for a doctor's office to call. So, And somebody really patient asked me, have you gotten your voting pamphlet and all that yet? Do you know who you're voting for? Do you need any help? Do you need any descriptions? Do you need any, just any help on any one of the um, all down ballot? I was so surprised. I'd never heard of this program before. And I, I had to like, you know, who are you? <laughs> But it's a, it's a Washington State program, and I can only hope that more states would actually start to do that. If we have people that do know who is on the ballot, because that's our main problem, we look and we see a bunch of names we don't know, we maybe go, okay, but they're a Republican or they're a Democrat. You know, a lot of people do the party lines. Well, right now, definitely. Absolutely. You can't get me to vote for a Republican for nothing right now. Nothing. No, nope, me neither. You know what I'm saying? Because even if you are sane, 
you've a, you've aligned yourself with an insane potty. <laughs> so yes. uh, that means you a little you a little touch too, because you're willing to continue to ride with them. But uh, but that's the thing is a lot of people don't care. They they know they see all the corruption, all the just the bad stuff going on. They don't care. As long as they get to maybe have a little bit lower taxes or whatever. And blame the other people for their issues. Mm -hmm. right, we got to get on out of here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Anna, with your whole I'm Sorry. Talk. Just, just the... It, when I want to talk politics with my neighbors, which I have a, a good amount of Republican neighbors. I'll ask, what are the issues that are important to you? I'll take identity completely out of it. And the people in my neighborhood know that you know, the, the left is not so simple and I know that the right is not so simple. You know, I have neighbors who have said, I can't call myself Republican anymore because I can't align with that, but I can't align with the Democrats either. And when they go vote? Exactly. Good question. I know what they're going to do. We all mm -hmm. know. I, I know what they're going to do. And I'm not saying it as a, well, it is a judgment, but it's, it's it's a reasonable judgment, right? I mean, yes. Like they reject the worst of their party, just as I reject the worst of the Democratic Party. Now they're not equal in scope or intensity, but right. you have a it's like a dual choice. I mean, it's not like you got a bunch of variation here, right? So I showed a video early. I showed a video last week. Where everybody, the lady was doing a parody, of course. But the whole premise of it is a got you question. We should go search the Democrats' office and see what we could find. And the lady went, do it. And if they broke the law, they should be prosecuted like everybody else. See, that's the deal. It's, it, it... Yeah, with the exception of your most diehard Democrats, your liberals and progressives, not your Democrats, but your liberals and your progressives who would be independent if we had an independent option. We like, yeah, lock them up too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You broke you 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 broke the <laughs> law. Prove and it. You lock think, them up. And you think <laughs> you constantly keep thinking that at least on the Democratic side of the aisle, you keep thinking that we're treating the Democrats like you treated Trump, like you treated everybody, oh, Cruz, those people. We're not putting these people on a pedestal. Why? Because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt the pedestal can tip over and crush us. We ain't that stupid. We ain't going to do that. But see, if you just... did something wrong, you need to pay the price of it. Period. Because whatever you did wasn't benefiting the American people. It was benefiting you if it broke the law. Because obviously you we all know you're going to make the laws in a sense that I didn't break the law and you and you benefit from it. So and now you look at if you under undermine the law itself, you don't even have to worry about that standard anymore. <laughs> you don't go to bed. Am I keeping you up? I got on Facebook from an area that called itself progressive. I did last a week. All blue baggers? Don't dare criticize any Democrats. No, oh, no, no. Yeah, and no. I have, I do still take exception with the whole blue MAGA thing. Yeah. Uh, I get what you're saying, Mickey, because I've I dropped out of at least two democratic groups right because if you don't toe the line 
them boys come at you like you just evil, right? <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um, so from that point of view, I do get where people are coming up with blue MAGA. I just don't like the term because it equates them. And yeah. there's no one on the the left, no sizable group because there's outliers everywhere. There's no real uh, constituency on the left that would cover for Biden doing what Trump did. It's just not. I don't like, see. No, I really the don't whole, see. The party would not would not do it. It just wouldn't. Right. Um, as much as they shelter criminals and corrupt people like Nancy Pelosi and Schumer and them for being corrupt. Let them try to take over the government. By any means necessary, man. Them folks be like, "Yo, you can have them. Come get them." <laughs> right? It, so that's why I don't like the blue maga thing because they're not equivalent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're, 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 that that blue maga thing is abs- to me, my it's opinion. Li- it's like the their blue maga language, thing is you know, the equivalent of black li- Black Lives Matter too. Yeah, Black Lives Matter and White Lives Matter is a response thing. It's not it's an a actual response. thing. Yeah. Anyway, we got to get out of here. We over an hour, so I don't know if um. See, that's how tired I am. I forgot. So, in summary, old man gets beat with hammer after his home is broken into. Oh, my, oh yeah, that was. And please go vote. Is that so, and everything? Yeah, that pretty much covers it. So Parker is still here. I actually got a video for Parker and Anna. I like his pad level, James. Open open field runner. Yeah. Hey, look at him go. The 20. Wes, he might do it. Wes, he's going to do it. Oh, my goodness, buddy. Do it. Do it. Do it. Touchdown. Oh, man. He's my favorite squirrel. Look at him. Oh, poor guy. He's tired. That's not a very good celebration. He doesn't work on his celebration. He's worn out. Oh. You people kidding me? Maybe that's how they practice trying to tackle Lamar Jackson around here. He'd probably be as tough to catch as that squirrel. I feel so bad for the squirrel. That thing is terrified. <laughs> that squirrel was tired. That squirrel was like, scary. where is a tree? Uh-huh. <laughs> that squirrel is used to climbing up and down a tree and jump a branch and bread. He ain't used to running 50 yards. That ain't uh they ain't made for that. They ain't made for that. But he made and I swear, it. man, I, I mean, I know it's a squirrel. So I don't get overly wrapped up in certain levels of animalness, but I love animals. And that poor thing was in distress. He was scared. He or she was scared out of its mind. But I got to give it to which whichever yeah. college that was. I got to give it to him. Y'all don't even care who scores now. <laughs> just, just make just it talk down, man. The, the opposite team, your team, a squirrel. It don't even matter anymore. Y'all go chill. Touchdown. Y- y'all need a hobby. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Y'all, y'all literally just sat there and just cheered a squirrel. Let that sink in. 2022. My family used to actually raise squirrels in New York. We had one each year that some reason squirrels would come into the the in between our floors, have their babies, and then jet. And this one time we had to actually raise a baby squirrel. Yeah, I'm not raising a squirrel. I'm not, I'm not, no, not doing that. They are adorable. Don't let them near your coffee. They are adorable rodents. Yeah, they're let, like the cutest don't rodent. Let, don't let they're them like, near your coffee. They are so they, cool. They will drink coffee. Well, that one did drink coffee and then would like run around the house crazy. Yeah, but it's a rodent. It's coffee because it's a rodent. But yeah, I feel you though. I love animals. I think we animals used are so to be cool. like like switch the. 
which hand the cup would and the scroll would like run all the way over and down. They like coffee. Well, that's because they were addicted, Anna. <laughs> you had Anna, a thing. <laughs> the poor thing was strung out. Anna, we really need to sit. We need to really sit down and try to figure out why is a squirrel in your house. She explained it. It was a warm place to give birth. They go between the floors, just like a rat goes between the walls. Mm -hmm. They're just rats. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't care what nobody thinks about a squirrel. They're, they're, just they're a rat. rodents. They are rat that live outside. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if they're looking for somewhere safe. For the vulnerable young ones, they will uh -huh. go where they, that's why they go in attics. Yeah. Okay, y'all can go now. You don't have your baby. You can. Yeah. And then they leave droppings behind, and then your home becomes infested with fleas and roaches. I don't care. They didn't pay rent. <laughs> did you just mute yourself? Did I? I did not. No. Oh, I didn't hear a word that came out of your mouth. That's because you're good at ignoring me. I am, but I didn't ignore you this time. Oh. Oh. It's okay. See, it's tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, ComplexSimpleMan.com. That's where I be at. Check me out. And Anna? Well, I actually just did the uh, pick out a handle for YouTube, so you can find me the at sign, um, you know, the A, and Borrelia, etc. So just like the website, Borrelia, etc. dot com. So at Borrelia, etc. for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. I, 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 I. We'll have a good know. talk about it sometime, Nikki. Yep. Nope. Nope. I don't want a squirrel. I sure as hell ain't gonna get a possum in my house. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, not gonna form an individual that is our show for tonight. We will see you tomorrow for Saturday Night Vibes. 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And until next time, we will see you when we see you.